Hello and welcome. This is Faces Opinion, being trained by the Grade Beards. Welcome you back to another video. It's November, and you know what that means Skyrim Month, the series where I release Skyrim related videos throughout the entire month of November. For this installment, I wanted to do something a tad bit different, that being power scaling. Yes, in this video, I'm going to be attempting to power scale The Last Dragonborn. <laughs> this should go well and not cause any issues whatsoever. Right? Alright, so before we get started, I need to establish some ground rules here. Trust me, we're going to need them. Number one, I am not a power scaler. Unfortunately, I am not Chuck the Cybercuck. I wish I was, but I'm not. So, if you're going into this video expecting me to be saying that the Dragonborn can travel at immeasurable speed and can sell an entire multiverse, showing on screen many math equations that prove my point, you're going to be disappointed. I'm mainly going to be talking about all the powers, equipment, abilities, and feats garnered throughout the Dragonborn's adventures. So don't expect calculations and heavy math because I'm bad at that type of stuff. Trust me. Number two, when it comes to something like scaling the last Dragonborn, you're going to need to make certain decisions on how you plan to do so. What I mean by that is when it comes to a character like the Dragonborn, they're going to be difficult to gauge how powerful they can be since the Dragonborn is an RPG character and their powers, weapons, abilities, and feats are dependent on the player. Meaning that I have to make an executive decision that some may not like, but I believe it is the best way to do it. That being, I am only going to scale the last Dragonborn using the main questline and both the Dawnguard and Dragonborn DLC, as these three pertain to the Dragonborn's overall story. Side quests will not be factored into this, unless it is something that logically makes sense. That means the Companions, Dark Brotherhood, Thieves Guild, and College of Winterhold questlines are not being mentioned, though I will be making separate videos for them, which will come out at a later date. That also means that there will not be any mention of Daedric artifacts either, except for maybe one, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. When it comes to the subject of the Dragonborn's race, it's kind of irrelevant. Yes, each race does give a certain advantage, but it is relatively minor compared to other abilities, and can be easily replicated by any enchanted item or potion. But for simplicity, we can just go with the default Nord that was used in all the promotional material, as well as give basic level skills in everything. Now, with all that said, let's dive into this and determine how powerful the Dragonborn actually is. Let's talk about the weapons and armor of the Dragonborn. For this, we're going to be talking about all the unique gear that can be found throughout the main quest and DLCs, mainly because the Dragonborn can technically use any random weapon and armor set that can be found, and that would be boring to talk about a regular old iron battle axe or longbows. Also, I will not be mentioning any equipment that can be made at a forge and enchanted, since that can go many different ways for every type of weapon and armor piece and every possible enchantment for them. First off, let's talk about armor. The best armor that can be recovered for the Dragonborn has to go to the Blades armor, as it offers the best protection compared to anything else in the aforementioned quest lines. The only drawback is that it's not enchanted, but that isn't that big of a deal. For armor still, we also have a one-of-a-kind shield called the Targe of the Blooded, which can be found during the quest Elder Knowledge. Simply put, this shield has spikes that can cause bleeding damage. Then we get to the unique weapons that can be claimed, starting off with Dragonbane, which can be found at Skyhaven Temple along with the Blades Armor, which has the enchantment that can do extra damage to dragons, as well as being able to inflict shock damage to those who aren't. There's also Mirax Sword and Staff, which can absorb stamina and spray tentacles, which can cause poison damage respectively. Though the best weapon in the Dragonborn's arsenal goes to Ariel's bow, without any shadow of a doubt, since that is the literal weapon belonging to a god. Not just any god, but Ariel, or Ariel, or Akatosh, whatever your preferred nomenclature is. This bow is so powerful it can manipulate the sun itself by either causing solar flares to fall from the sky smiting people, or blocking out the sun for a period of time, all dependent on what type of arrows you use to shoot at the sun with it. Anyone who gets hit by an arrow from this bow will take sun damage, making it deadly to undead creatures in particular. From a lore standpoint, Ariel's bow is the strongest weapon available. Oh yeah, the Dragonborn also has Lydia as well. Can't forget about that. When it comes to magic, this is going to be a tad bit tricky on how to determine. 
Now, obviously, the Dragonborn is capable of learning magic and automatically knows two spells at the start of the game, those being flames and healing, rather basic level spells, though the Dragonborn can also learn sparks while trying to escape Helgen, since you can find the spell tome in a cage that requires you to do lockpicking for the first time, meaning that the Dragonborn definitely can know three spells. Now, yes, the Dragonborn can learn more than that, but that is dependent on many different variables, and it will be hard to know what spells would be learned and to what degree. Like I said, RPG characters are a pain to determine their skill sets. So what I'm going to do as a compromise is that any new spells introduced in the Dawnguard and Dragonborn DLCs can be factored into this scaling, and I will put a list of both of those spell lists for reference to see what the Dragonborn is capable of. The big standouts of what many of the spells being given are going to be from the schools of Restoration and Conjuration. Shouts. Now, I might be given a fair share of slack for this section, but here it is. I am not giving the Dragonborn access to every shout in the game. As we are not covering side quests and miscellaneous adventures, that means we cut off a chunk of shouts that can be learned. So, how many shouts does the Dragonborn actually know if we're just going off of the main questline and DLCs? Well, out of 27 shouts, the Dragonborn will have access to 14 of them. Those being, in order of first learnt, Unrelenting Force, Whirlwind Sprint, Become Ethereal, Clear Skies, Fire Breath, Dragon Ren, Call of Dragon, Storm Call, Call of Valor, Drain Vitality, Summon Dernavir, Soul Tear, Dragon Aspect, and Bend Will. And that is a solid lineup with many different uses. I'll go over the top ones worth mentioning, like Storm Call, being able to summon massive thunderstorms, Soul Tear, which is able to rip out someone's soul from their body and trapping it in a soul gem. Whirlwind Sprint, being used to amp up your speed. Drain Vitality, which can siphon a person's health, stamina, and magicka. Become Ethereal, which makes it to where you can't take damage for a period of time. Bend Will, which can put people and even dragons under mind control. And most notably, Dragon Aspect, which serves as a pseudo-transformation, augmenting the power of the Dragonborn even further by increasing shout damage, reducing the cooldown time per shout use, and amplifying defense and offensive capabilities. Moving on to other miscellaneous abilities, you could make the argument that the Dragonborn has the blessing of the Guardian Stones, which have the ability to increase the skills pertaining to that of the Warrior, Thief, or Mage class, since you walk past them on the way to Riverwood after escaping Helgen. Another thing you could say the Dragonborn has going for them is being Kermaeus Mora's champion, as they would have gotten a massive boost in their skills due to the Ugma Infinium, since that quest can be completed in conjunction with the main story. Though if you don't want to give the Dragonborn that, they would also would have gotten access to some of Hermaeus Mora's black books during the Dragonborn DLC, augmenting their powers even more, such as amplifying unrelenting force to where it can shout someone to dust. Another powerful ability that can be mentioned would be the Vampire Lord transformation acquired during the Dongar DLC, which can be given to you anytime by Serana, which gives a vast number of abilities, such as Drain Life, Summon Gargoyle, and Vampiric Grift to name a few. I won't go over every one of them since I made a video detailing what a Vampire Lord can do. It is linked in the description if you want to know more. Though, I think the biggest ability of the Dragmorn has to be the fact that they are a Dragonborn. Now, what exactly is the Dragonborn in a lore perspective? A Dragonborn is someone who has the body of a mortal, but the blood and soul is that of a dragon. Arn Gear elaborates on this. Allow me to read this excerpt. Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons are also able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities. Whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down throughout the centuries. What you would already have learned in a few days took even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Some believe the Dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. That sounds pretty impressive. However, let's take this a step further, as the dragons in the Elder Scrolls universe aren't your run-of-the-mill standard flying fire-breathing lizards. They are a lot more than that, as dragons are the children of Akatosh, one of the Nine Divines, and is considered the Dragon God of Time. And it is believed that dragons are more closely related to the Aedra 
than any animal or mortal, as they are ageless and immortal, possessing a soul that is beyond physical death. Simply put, the dragons are practically divine figures, and with the dragonborn having the soul of a dragon and their abilities, the same thing can be applied. Now, is the dragonborn more powerful than the nine divines? No. However, they would be a force of nature. And we haven't even talked about any of the feats we've seen in-game. Now, across our journey in Skyrim, the last Dragonborn will face off against a legion of foes, consisting of bandits, draugr, wild animals, mages, thalmor, forsworn, automatons, falmer, vampires, and dragons. Though we don't care about any of that, we want to hear about the likes of Harkon, Mirak, and Alduin. Trust me, I will talk about them and some other enemies worth mentioning as well, but I want to talk about some of the non-combat related feats before getting to the main event. Some of our non-combat feats starting off would be becoming Thane of Whiterun, infiltrating the Thalmor Embassy, entering the Soul Cairn, becoming Kermaeus Mora's champion, unlocking Blackreach. Then we get to more interesting ones that don't seem impressive at first glance, but actually are when looking at it deeply like being trained by the Greybeards and withstanding their voice as they subject you to their power when they properly declare the last Dragonborn as Dragonborn. You have to withstand all four Greybeards' voice at the same time for a short period of time, and they even state that very few were able to endure their doom. I consider this a great deal. Another big thing is the Dragonborn's mental resistance, as they were able to read an Elder Scroll, one of the, if not the most powerful things in the Elder Scrolls universe, hence its name. Not once, but twice, and not deal with any negative effects whatsoever, such as blindness and or insanity. Now, if you want to be nitpicky and say that one of the instances of reading the scroll involved the Dragonborn using the ritual of the Ancestor Moth and shouldn't be counted, fine, fair enough. But to back up the point of the Dragonborn's willpower, they can read Hermaeus Mora's black books as well without going crazy either. Another powerful showing would also have to be when the Dragonborn had to go to Sovereign Guard, in which Alduin encased the realm with his mist to ensnare the souls residing within, leading to the Dragonborn alongside three other Sovereign Guard heroes to use clear skies to get rid of the mist three times. Why is this a big deal? It's just mist. Yes but it is covering the entirety of Sovereign Guard, and it is a huge realm, the size of which ranges from being as big as a planet to being infinite in size. I couldn't get a definitive answer, and I will leave it to your own interpretation on how big Sovereign Guard is, but regardless, that is impressive, as the Dragonborn is able to disperse this mist many times over. Now granted, it is a four-person effort to clear the mist away, and the Dragonborn should get one for for the credit. Though considering the possible size of said realm, it is very impressive. Now comes the moment that all of you have been waiting for. Talking about all of the foes the last Dragonborn has come across and slain. We have seen him defeat the likes of Arch Curate Verfer, one of the last living Snow Elves, and the one who created the Tyranny of the Sun Prophecy. And during his battle, the Dragonborn would end up surviving him destroying the Inner Sanctum and would defeat him to claim Ariel's bow. What about Lord Harkon, the leader of the Volcahire Vampires who plotted to block out the sun with Ariel's bow to fulfill the tyranny of the sun prophecy? Making use of his vampire lord form, he would end up taking numerous arrow shots from Ariel's bow. We have also the Dragon Priest Nakreen, who served as the protector of the Portal of Sovereign Guard in Skuldafin. Now, we don't know for sure how powerful Nakreen is comparatively to not just the other bosses, but the other Dragon Priests for that matter. However, the fact that Alduin himself anointed him to protect the portal applies either some level of power or competence. Another lesser known figure that the Dragonborn battled against would be Soon. Who is that? He is the guy the Dragonborn has to beat in a fight to gain entry to the Hall of Valor in Sovereign Guard. Why is this a big deal? He's just some big, tall, muscular bouncer. Well, this bouncer is the Nordic god of trials against adversity, and was the shield thane to shore himself. So yeah, the Dragonborn fought a god. Granted, it wasn't like a fight to death or anything, but still, 
he threw hands with a god and was able to enter the Hall of Valor as a result. Let that sink in. Who else do we got? How about Mirak, a very powerful dragon priest and the first ever dragonborn, meaning he has identical abilities to the dragonborn but has other things going for him as well, like being trained under Hermaeus Mora and learned even more powerful abilities, was able to bend the will of people and dragons while trapped in Apocrypha, as well as being able to absorb the power of dragons that the last dragonborn slain, stealing their powers from him. Not to mention, in lore, he had a battle with fellow dragon priest Valak the Jailer, and it is alleged that they broke the island of Solstein off mainland Skyrim during their fight. Last, but not least, let's talk about the dragons. Not all of them, because a lot of them are kind of suck. But we'll talk about the big four that are worth mentioning. Such as Odeving, who was Alduin's right-hand man. Who the last Dragonborn was able to capture using the trap at Dragon's Reach and making him swap sides. Then there's Dernivir, the undead dragon residing in the Soul Cairn, who knows necromancy and has access to the Soul Tear Shout. What about Parfenax? I mean, technically, that is a quest you can do in the main story. He is the master of the Greybeards and taught the Doom to mortals and has absolute mastery over the way of the voice. And finally, we reach the King, the Mac Daddy himself, the World Eater Alduin. Remember earlier when I said the dragons are divine figures? Alduin is living proof of that, as he is the firstborn of Akatosh, the creator of the dragon civilization and the harbinger of the apocalypse in Nord mythology. In the lore, it states that Alduin destroyed the previous world so that the current one can begin by destroying the Kalpa, which is simply put a period of time in which the Elder Scrolls exist. After destroying it, a new world is created, replacing it, making Alduin a creator and destroyer. Let's not forget that he can also travel to different realms, such as when he went to Sovereign Guard to consume the souls of the dead to become more powerful, the same place where he engulfed the entire realm in fog many times over, or how he withstood the power of an Elder Scroll when the trio of Nordic heroes used it against him and only got flung forward in time in which he would bring back legions of dragons back from the dead leading to the dragon crisis, and the last dragonborn beat him. Unfortunately, he was not able to absorb his soul, meaning that Alduin will return again, and next time, we are going to have no dragonborn there to stop him. Well, that covers everything I wanted to go over regarding the last dragonborn. Now, it is time to answer the question. How strong is the dragonborn? The answer to that... Very. The Dragonborn to me is similar to that of a mythic hero you hear about in ancient mythology, like Hercules, pulling off all these incredible showings of power. It is no surprise that people like to make the joke that the Dragonborn is a god amongst men and can solo everything. And with how certain people treat the Dragonborn and worship the ground he walks on, it makes sense. Honestly, that comment I made earlier about the Dragonborn being multiversal was a joke initially, but thinking about how powerful the likes of Alduin really is, the argument is there, just saying. Now tell me, how powerful do you believe the last Dragonborn is? What do you think of my analysis? Would you want me to do more of these in the future? Comment down below. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and make sure you subscribe for more Skyrim Month content. More videos coming out soon. Until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.